we'll do an introduction, um, but I think I want to uh, to just get us going, so I'll do the introduction afterwards so that we'll uh, make the most use of our time. Um, so what I'd like to do is to, to start um, basically by asking each of you to just um, tell me briefly um, what you do and the, the, the things that, um, um, that you think about that are related to um, our topic. Our topic is education and, and development, uh, political, economic, and social impacts of schools. And I know you all bring, um, I've looked at your brief bio, so I have a sense of <laughs> what you do, but it's only a sense. So, um, well, let's see. Should we start um, with, let's start with Jane. <laughs> um, yeah, like you've said, my name is Jane um, Adiambo Chiroma. Um, that uh, depicts three identities. <laughs> I'm, I'm born Kenyan raised in Kenya for about 25 years and I'm married to a Nigerian, lived in Nigeria for about four years and now I'm a student at uh, Stellenbosch University and also lecturing part-time and that gives me a South African identity because I've been there for uh, seven years so I've, I've navigated those spaces and it has actually influenced how I work, how I think and what I think education can do to change Africa. Yeah. Um, Jane, you have been um, teaching courses in philosophy of education uh, with an emphasis on democratic citizenship. That's right. And what are the things you think about when you think about democratic citizenship? Um, when I talk about democratic citizenship, you, I, I, I do analyze the context in which my students come from. For example, the students I'm dealing with right now uh, students from South Africa with history of apartheid and there's issues of uh, xenophobia because it's a mixed uh, university. It's sort of like a global village. So I have the, almost the whole world represented in the university in which I teach. So I teach ideas of inclusion and democracy. I teach issues of imaginative action, compassionate action in the sense that we need to create places and spaces where our students can be able to interact freely, speak their minds freely, respect one another, and rec while we maintain our diversities without using our diversities to divide us as students. That's an aspect of it. Let's go across the Atlantic uh, to Puerto Rico. And Justo, tell us about your background, what you do. Yeah. Hello and thanks uh, for this opportunity. My name is Justo Mendez Aramburu. I come from Puerto Rico. My background, I think I am still living it. Uh, I was a student activist in the university. Uh, in the struggle for uh, the liberation of Puerto Rico uh, to reach our independence. Uh, as a nation, as a Latin American uh, nation, and because of very personal reasons, I that said in my university preparation that I was not going to be a teacher, because in my family everybody is a teacher, so I wanted like to do something different. I came to be be founder together with my wife and I is of a school. And what we are doing in the school, that is a school for the, the, the kids uh, on the most uh, oppression, on marginalized kids, what people label like school dropouts, youth at risk, they put many names to them. Uh, what we are doing is um, supporting a community uh, to liberate itself because we understood in the way that we were wrong in the 70s, that it is not true that a free Puerto Rico would make a free Puerto Ricans, that it was the other way uh, around. A, a critical mass of free Puerto Ricans will free Puerto Rico. And then we will be able to live uh, in democracy. Uh, we will learn what is that of citizenship, what 
we we don't know uh, because we are not citizens of where we live of where we are from of Puerto Rico we are citizens of another country uh, so what we do is liberation education uh, we don't liberate nobody uh, we liberate in community uh, so what we have created is just a community of activists very good Sabrina uh, it's hard to follow that I'm Sabrina Stevens um, and I work with uh, teachers students parents who are um, organizing to reclaim their public schools basically and um, what comes up for me a lot in thinking about how schools um, interact with the you know with economic issues and things like that is that you know to me there's a kind of an assumption in our society that um, an educated citizenry is necessary to uh, to sustain a free people but what's not always obvious to people is that it's not there's no magic you know a, amount of facts or knowledge or academic learning that you can do that automatically creates a free person who's capable of um, you know, acting, you know, fully participating in a democracy. You actually have to practice the skills and habits of be living in a democracy in order to then be able to have those skills and habits. And so, um, to me, the, the importance of democratic education is that, you know, what we're talking about is how do we make sure that students have places to practice those things so that, you know, they're, they're living that life this whole time as opposed to expecting them auto automatically to just have certain skills when they're 18 and we let them vote or... Um, you know, to have certain skills when they get into a workplace and to ensure that that workplace is a fair one that actually sustains their ability to provide for families and all these other things that, um, that it's an adult's responsibility to do. How does the school system influence your particular area of concern? And I, I can imagine the way that you, you might respond the three. You are engaged with three different societies, or in, in Jane's case, you're involved with several societies, yeah, but um, three different, certainly, parts of the world. Mm -hmm. um, and what you do is influenced by the places where you are. Would you talk about that? Um, um, well, yeah, that's, that's quite, um, it relates to what I would say and I combine the ideas of my experiences in South Africa and my experiences in, in Kenya to research and teach because I'm researching and I'm teaching. And the focus more, uh, I'm researching de democratic citizenship education and its influence to, or with its implications to Kenyan higher education. So what I've done is I look into society and see what society is struggling with, which is undemocratic. And then I research to find out what does values of democratic citizenship has that can help deal with the anomalies and imbalances in society. So for example, in the Kenyan situation now, as I think about conceptualizing a notion that we can use in, in, in re-looking or reconstructing higher education in Kenya, in which my interest is, is um, the, the pointer mostly is this ethnic violence in Kenya. There is, after every election from 1992 to 2007, and even last year when there was election that was proved as, as free and fair, we still had some unrest in different parts of our society. And so this brings me to the question of what is higher education doing to prepare Kenyans who are citizens to be able to deal with this phenomenal um, inequal, in, in unequal and undemocratic scenario in which we find ourselves, where so many people are killed because of their democratic rights to vote or to say what they need to say, or how should they say it, but how is higher education playing a role in educating citizenship to deal with this socio-economic and political problems that we find in the country. That is just an aspect of what we do. So then this brought me to a point where I, I, when I teach, my research informs how I teach. 